today it's all about ozone. Hey guys, Devin with Reef Dudes, and today we're talking all about ozone and my experience with ozone on the reef tank. I've been wanting to do this video for a few weeks now, but I'm slowly stocking up to make sure I had all the right supplies and test equipment to properly analyze this data and bring you guys some accurate, good information on it. Uh, now, first of all, I want to throw it out there. Um, a few people have said they miss some of my live streams and stuff. So if you guys are subscribed, make sure you guys hit that bell so that you get the notifications when we go live or pop produce and throw out some new awesome videos. Now, today's topic, um, all about ozone. The first thing I can say is, wow, the, the water clarity that you get from this is absolutely amazing. Um, I started out the other day by running it at the generator at 25 milligrams for three hours. Um, that very quickly made a pretty noticeable impact on water clarity. I did set up a time lapse to take a photo every five minutes. However, my memory card kind of aired out after a while, so I buggered that up. Um, it wasn't quite as noticeable on the camera as it is in person, but I'll give you guys a, hopefully it shows up but it is absolutely crystal clear from one end to the far end of the tank. So I really hope it's actually showing up on camera. Uh, my tank was pretty clean and clear to begin with, but now it's even just more like it's, it amazes me. Uh, I don't know if there's an easy way to do this by video to see what the eye can see, but even if you look at some of the fish eyes, you can see little reflections off of the eyeballs and stuff. Like it's amazing how much extra clarity you're getting from it. Now for actually running the ozone, I have this little generator in the back. It's a five to 50 milligram unit. Um, I just 3D printed a little bracket so it hangs off the edge of the tank. Now for the intake of the ozone generator, I have a little air stone. And this essentially is just acting as a filter to filter any dust particles, that type of stuff. Then from there, it goes into, into one of the inlets of the skimmer. So when the ozone generator is off, it's still sucking air through the road of that tubing and through the front. And when it's on, it sucks, that draws air through the ozone generator into the skimmer. And the skimmer is actually acting as a big reaction chamber. So what are all the benefits of running ozone? Why would you want to do it? Well, the first for me is ozone clarifies your water like crazy. It's pretty amazing. Um, how it works is when you have your oxygen molecule, uh, you have two oxygen molecules together. Uh, the ozone creates static electricity, which essentially breaks up those mole oxygen molecules. Then instead of having the two together, you have a bunch of random molecules floating around. As they smash into each other, some of them will join up to have three oxygen molecules, and that's O3, which is ozone. Now, ozone's fairly unstable, and so that one extra oxygen molecule wants to break free. And as that breaks free, it's gonna to attach to organic molecules in your aquarium, and it's gonna help oxidize it. And as it oxidizes, it, it's gonna break it down to smaller particles. And so what you're essentially doing is taking the pigments are the molecules in the water that absorb light and give you that yellowing and breaks them down to smaller so they're no longer blocking or absorbing light and that's how you get the extra water clarity. Now too much ozone can actually be a bad thing in a tank. I mean it could probably not the healthiest for the fish or you don't necessarily want to be breathing it in. So I think with ozone less really is more. So last night I did some tests and it jumped up fairly quick with the Orp Pro. Um, so even now I just turned it down a bit. So I was running at 25 milligrams, now I'm probably down to about 20. So I'm gonna keep toning it down until I have just enough to do what I want. So one of the things I actually found really interesting was monitoring the ORP. So before I started ozone, it was around 2.30. Uh, you can tell exactly right when the ozone turned on. And it jumped all the way up and peaked at 3.21. Now this was running my around 20, 25 milligrams over a three hour period. Now, right when it turned off, you can see it suddenly starts to drop fairly quickly again, and now it's sitting around 245, 248. So from there to there, we got about a 28 increase in ORP. Now, I also set it to run from 1230 at night to 330 in the morning. So my, that was kind of my original plan was to run at night for three hours, and it, it climbs actually very rapidly. So 350 from 250, so there's about 100 points that jumped in less than an hour. So that tells me the orbs probably turned up a little, or sorry, the ozone's turned up a little too high. So I did turn it down a bit, so it's probably closer to around 15 to 20 milligrams. Now you can see it's on, off, on, off, on, off at the top, and that's because I told it, the apex, to turn off the ozone if it hits 350, or goes over 350. So that's why you can see it jumping around. Now when it turns off again, you can see it falls pretty rapidly, and we're back down to around 248, 250-ish. So there was a bit of a jump initially to there, 
And then around here, it's fairly similar. So I am kind of curious to see over the next week or two if it kind of slowly raises itself or stays about the same. Now the other really interesting thing is when you take a look at how it correlates to pH. Now, as right when the ozone turns on, you can see pH jumps up as well. So before it was on, the highest point was 8.03, around 8.01. We turn it on and it jumps up to 8.06 and peaked at 8.09. Then after it turns off, it drops down again and settles back at 8.02. Now in the middle of the night when things turn on, so it was around 8.04 and then it went up to 8.05, dropped a little bit and then went back up again and peaked at 8.07. So it did rise again and it does seem to match when the ozone's on. So there is, to me, it seems like there's some correlation, correlation with the pH in either the ozone or the ORP value. I suspect it's the ORP value, but now same thing here. We have a spike from something in the middle of the night in ORP and the pH jumped as well. So yeah, it's kind of interesting to see, but it's definitely gonna take a little more studying to see what happens over time, but it's another kind of fascinating point to dig into a little deeper. So as you guys can see, there's actually a lot of really interesting stuff happening with ozone. Um, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface of it and there's still a lot more to learn. Um, so far, I'm fairly interested to see how my orb goes up over time. Is it going to keep slowly rising? Is it going to stay the same? I know how much I feed is definitely a chunk of it, but I think there is, it will be kind of interesting to see if it kind of teeters up or what happens. The other thing I'm really interested to figure out with the correlations with pH and to kind of slowly tweak it each night to find that just enough thing to get perfect water clarity without running too much ozone. Now, one thing to note, I do feel that with ozone, less is more. Too much ozone can actually cause havoc in your tank, it can cause damage. So if you're gonna do it, make sure you do it very low levels and very cautiously. You don't need much at all to get great results. On a very low amount, there's a lot of benefits I can see. So even just looking at the tank, there's some awesome water clarity. You know, five and a half, six feet down, it's, things are crystal clear. So that part is really cool. Now, as for the skimmer, I've my little carbon reactor or carbon filter on top has been doing very well. The ozone dissolves itself in the water within a couple seconds. So there isn't too much of a issue or worry about it in the water coming out of the skimmer. That's, for the most part, takes care of itself. If you had a small reactor, you'd probably want carbon on the output. But in a skimmer, by the time it leaves the body, it's already used up. Now for the carbon, I haven't noticed any smell or anything, so that's been working great. So it's probably 99% of it's getting used up in the skimmer, or if it, any of it is getting out, the carbon is taking care of that. So, so far so good. As for that, the fish, everything, even like the eyeballs in the fish, you can see reflections in there. I tried if you see bubbles in the tank, they look high def, crystal clear. So there's a lot of really cool little benefits that I'm slowly starting to notice. So I'm sure there's going to be many more videos in the future and more in-depth dives once I have more time to research and 100% verify how some of these correlations work. Now, if you guys have any questions at all or you want me to test specific things, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. Now, a couple other things to note. I did also check this with the Senai PAR meter. And there was a good jump in par. At the sand bed, there was about 20 to 30 par increase in the sand bed. So just that alone shows how much stuff is being absorbed into the water. So I just fed the fish a bunch of mice, so I'm sure my orp's going to jump up. But we'll see. But yeah, even just that. So running it for a couple hours gave me about 30 more par. So you're getting more value out of your lights. Your water is more crystal clear. There's tons of great potential benefits here. And like I said before, if you're going to use it, always err on the side of caution. I would say less is more. And if you are going to do it, run it at a very low amount and do it only for a short time. It's always a good idea to have an ORP probe so you can monitor it and see how things are doing. Now, if you enjoyed this, make sure you guys hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button because we're going to dig into this deeper and deeper in future videos. Now, one of the other really cool things I noticed, if you guys have been following the channel, I actually had a bit of a green algae in this little patch around here. And it was a cyano. I believe it's a cyanobacteria, green algae, but it's really receded. Like from yesterday, this was, a, I'll see if I have a photo, I believe I took one yesterday. But there's a huge difference in the sand bed. There was bits of green, like you can kind of see little bits here and there. It was all over the sand bed and it is almost gone. So this is still, you know, a little bit early and anecdotal, but I suspect that it may have had an impact on killing the nutrients or helping kill the cyano. 
wherever the sand is eating. So I'm definitely kind of excited to dig into this further and see what else I can learn about it. But if it gets rid of all my green algae, that's another potential huge benefit.